Hello, today I want to share with you a classic edging. Uh, you can find it in lots of vintage books and it's sometimes called hen and chicks, sometimes has no names in old books, but I think it's a lovely uh, classic edging that's easy to do with one shuttle only. So I want to show you how to make it. So we're going to start with one shuttle only, wrap around your hand and we're going to hide the tail in the first ring. I also have a video that shows another little trick I use sometimes, but I'm going to show you this, this one this time. So just flick your tail end inside the first loop and following along with your core thread and tighten. So that's the first half like this. And the first ring has four stitches, one pico and four stitches. So we're going to make the first four stitches. So that's one. And I'm really going to try to work more slowly today so that beginners can follow along. I often get the comment that I work too fast, but of course this video assumes that you know how to make the basic stitches. I'm putting a link in the corner of this video to another video that shows how to make the stitches if you're a complete beginner and don't know how to make the stitches. So second stitch, flicking my tail end inside again and along the core thread, two, third stitch, fourth stitch and today I tried for a change to work on a black background so please do tell me if it's better than the white background I normally use I'm always trying to improve so I've made my first four stitches I'm going to give the tail end a tug to make sure it's snug in there and then just cut it right against the stitches like this and we're going to complete this ring with the next four stitches one picot so I forgot to say one pico and then the last four stitches. And I've written the pattern for this edging in the information box below this video. So you don't need to go anywhere else to find it. It's right there available for you to use. So the last three stitches. Two. Three. And four. And close the ring. So we have our first little ring. So we're actually starting right here in the pattern. So first little ring, turn your work over. And as you can see, it's got bare threads in this pattern. And you can eyeball the bare threads, which is what I do most of the time. But if you want to be more precise, you can make yourself a little gauge out of a piece of thick paper or thin card. Um, so you want your gauge to be four millimeters. And the way to use it is you place it on top here, on top of the bare thread that's coming out of your ring. And then wrap around your hand to make the ring and then come back on top of the gauge and hold it between your thumb and forefinger and make the first stitch. So all those rings here on this side have got three stitches, one pico, three stitches, one pico, three stitches, one pico, three stitches. So three picots separated by three stitches. So this is my first stitch and then you can remove the gauge and you have your spacing made which will be, if you keep using your gauge, it will be even and consistent all the way through your edging. So three stitches, two, three, one pico. And as for the bare threads, I do eyeball my picots. You just get used to seeing what it looks like on your finger. So that's about the size I want for my picots. Two. Three, a pico again, three more stitches, one, two, three, a pico, one, two, three, and close the ring. And you'll find lots of versions of this edging. This is my version. I made the rings a bit smaller than the version I had in my in my vintage book. So it's adaptable. If you want something a bit bigger, a bit bolder, you can make your rings bigger. So we're going to go for the next bare thread. So again, placing my gauge on top of the bare thread, wrap around my hand and come back on top of the gauge. And now we're making the big ring here.
first half right against the gauge. Second half to complete the first stitch, I can remove the gauge. And we're making three stitches. And join to the first small ring we made. And I count the join as the first half of my next stitch. So next we want two stitches. So I'm completing it, completing it with the second half. And second stitch, two. And we want one, two, three, four, five, six more picots that are separated by two stitches for the big ring. So I've got two. I'm making my first picot. Two stitches, second picot, two stitches, third picot, two stitches, fourth picot, two stitches, fifth picot, two stitches. Six pico and complete with three more stitches to complete the ring. So there's the first one after the pico and two more stitches. And close the ring. So I'm assuming this ring here is the hen and these little guys here are the chicks. So we're going to make now the next, I call those of the border rings. So we reverse work again, use my gauge, place it on top of the bare thread, wrap around the hand and back on top of the gauge and make the first stitch. Remove the gauge and Two more stitches, so we're doing three and a join. And the next three one, two, three, and a pico. Three more stitches, one. Two, three, and the last pico of this ring. One, two, and three stitches, and close the ring. And now we're going to make the second chick. So again, with my pico gauge, place it on top. On top of the bare thread, wrap around the hand and bring the thread back on top of the gauge. And we're going to make four stitches this time. So that's the first half, second half of the first stitch. Remove your gauge. And three more stitches. Two. Three. Four. And join to the last picot of the big ring and four stitches to complete the ring two three four close the ring so that's it there's one set done and turn the work over, use our gauge again, place it on top of the bare thread, wrap around, come back on top of the gauge. And make the first half stitch right against the gauge, second half, remove the gauge, and two more stitches. One, two, and join. Can 
complete the join with the second half that makes the first stitch of the next three. So one, two, three, a picot, three more stitches, two, three, and one last picot and three more stitches. One, two, three. Close the ring. So that's it. There's one repeat. And now we're ready to make the next little chick. This one is not joined. So we're doing the same thing as before, placing our gauge on top. Come back around and back on top of the gauge. And we're making four stitches, pico four. Remove the gauge. Two. Three. Four. Pico. One. Two. Three. Four. And close the ring. So you see when you start the next repeat, this one, the little ring, the little chick is not attached yet. But then when you carry on, you'll come with your big ring and attach to it and continue. So that's it. Here's how to make the hen and chick vintage edging. I hope you enjoy it. If you would like to have a corner for it, please leave me a comment. If you're interested, I will design a corner for the hen and chick border so that if you're doing a handkerchief, for example, you could go around the corner. But for the moment, here's how to do the edging. I hope you enjoy it. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.